Okay, welcome. So in this video, we're going to learn how to use uh, materials and colors on top of your different nodes. And we're actually going to do something really cool. We're going to build a globe, uh, just like in the Maps application on iOS, where you can zoom out and you can see the globe of the entire world. Well, we're going to do that, except not with you know all the detail that the Maps app has, but you'll see what I mean. Okay, so we're going to say uh, level or uh, lesson four, and we're going to call this uh, colors and materials. And there's actually a few things that we need to do in order to get set up here. Okay, so the first thing is we need to go to Safari and we're going to type in scene kit reference. Okay, so here we have the scene kit framework reference. And um, what we need to do here is go to material. And there's going to be a bunch of different uh, things that we're going to talk about today, and we're going to do exactly what they, they do. Okay, but in order to do that, we need to grab these images that they're using. So I'm just going to take a screenshot of four of these, the ones that we're going to talk about, and uh, I'm going to do that by holding down Shift, Command, and 4, and it brings up this little cursor, and then I'm going to grab a screenshot of this, Okay, I'm just going to save it to the desktop, and I'm going to just name it, right here it says diffuse, so that's how I'm going to name this. So diffuse.png, and I'm going to do this for the next one, which is specular. Okay, and then I'm going to take a screenshot here. And of course, if you're doing your own project, you would have your own maps made by yourself or your artist or whatever. But since we are uh, just doing a demo here, we're just going to use the ones like this. Okay, so specular.png is how you name that. And then we're going to take another picture of the emission map. Okay. And we're just going to take a screenshot here. And then we're going to name this emission. PNG. And then finally, we're going to take one of the normal map, which is right here. Okay. And there we go. So we're going to name this normal.png. Okay, so now we have all our maps. Now, in order to load a picture into a playground, you have to do this little trick here. Okay, so we have our playground right here. We're going to right click, and right now it's closed. Okay, so let's make sure the simulator is closed. Let's make sure Xcode is closed. And we're going to right click here. We're going to say Show Package Contents. And then we have this Sources folder, but we don't need that, so we're going to delete the Sources folder. And we're going to create a new folder, and we're going to call it Resources. It's important you spell that correctly. Okay, so Resources. And then we're just going to drag in these uh, maps that we took screenshots of right into there. Okay? And then I'm actually going to make a copy of these so we can look at them uh, later. I can keep them on the desktop. But uh, so I put them right here and I made another copy just so we could look at them without having to dig into the resources folder. Okay? So now that's in the playground and we can go ahead and open it. All right, and this is our uh, thing from last time. So the simulator will open in the background like usual. We'll go ahead and minimize it. And then we'll make this full screen. Rename it to Lesson 4, Colors and Materials. OK, and then we're going to make a globe. So we're going to delete the shape that we did before. And instead, we're just going to do the geometry, and we're going to make it a sphere. So we're going to say SEN sphere, and it's going to have a radius of 1. OK, so what we should get here is a sphere once it loads. And let's also go ahead and change this action right here. And let's change it to rotate around. Uh, we're going to have it rotate around the Y axis, because it's going to be a globe. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change x to 0. I'm going to change y to 1 so that it rotates around the y-axis, and we'll have it rotate 
uh, 360 degrees, and let's make it last uh, about eight seconds. Okay, so now we'll wait for Xcode to load. Okay, and it finally loaded after waiting about 15 seconds. Okay, so here we have a sphere, and you can see if you look closely that it is rotating. All right, but right now it's just a blue color. Because remember, uh, let's go over this one more time. So we create a node, and a node is just a point in space that's facing a certain direction. But it doesn't have any sort of uh, shape or any sort of you know material on it. So in order to do that, we have to create what's called a geometry. And a geometry is the blueprint of the shape that we're going to draw. In this case, we're drawing a sphere with a radius of 1. Now, what it needs on top of that is a material, which would be like the plaster on a building, right? And you do that by accessing this property of the geometry, which is called first material. And then you have all these different options that you saw there in the framework reference. Uh, there's the diffuse, the specular, there's all sorts of different things. And uh, inside of that, it has contents. So let's go ahead and type in contents. And you can see here that it says any object, okay? So and then it also says it could be a color, an image, and this is using the Coco, but you could just place NS with UI and it would work. Okay, so it could be a color, an image, it could be all sorts of different things. Um, it could even be a, a sprite kit scene, right? So there's all sorts of different options. But in this case, we're going to change it from a color or an image. Okay, so I'm going to say contents is equal to UI color, blue color. And remember last time we did purple color and it changes it to color. Okay, so you get the idea of how the colors work. That's really easy. But actually what we can do is create a map on top of this. Okay, so let's go ahead and for the diffuse, which is just the like the matte color, we're gonna do in that globe. Okay, so we're gonna say UI image and we're gonna say named and then we already have that in the resources folder. So we can say diffuse.png. And if all goes well, we should get a globe. Boom. How about that? That's pretty cool, right? So let's look at what this is. So this is just a map, right? This is the screenshot that we took. And it's just a map of the world. And it's just a picture. It's a PNG file. And what it'll do is if you put an image into this contents thing, it'll draw that on top of the globe. Okay? And uh, that is very simple. So there's all sorts of different properties. The next one is this specular. And a specular is, um, let's go ahead and let this load again so it'll start rotating. Okay, so you see how this, this shiny spot? That's the specular, and that's the reflection. Right now we have it as a white color. But what we can do is actually make it so that when it goes over the land mass, it doesn't reflect, right? Because water reflects, you know, light, but land doesn't really reflect light. And so what you do if you want to do that is you have a black and white map. And this is what we took, right? This is the black and white map from the resources thing. And you can see that we want the white part to reflect, but we want the black part to be matte. And so you could have any sort of map. Um, but right now we're using a map of the world and let's go ahead and see what happens when we put this in. So we're going to say UI image and we're going to say names and we did specular dot PNG. Okay. And we'll wait for it to load. Okay. Now check this out. So what's happening is as it's rotating, it's shiny on the water, but it's not shiny on the land. Okay, see how that works? So that's because we've created a map. And if you look at this map again, the matte parts are going to be black and then the shiny parts are going to be white. Okay, so you just overlay a map. You can make it in Photoshop or have your artist do it or whatever uh, that just maps the, uh, the white as shiny and the black as not. Okay, and uh, let's go ahead and delete this double-sided because right now it's rendering this on the inside too, which is wasting performance. So we don't need that. And then let's add another one. So we're going to say geometry.firstmaterial. And now let's do an emission map. So if you've noticed in the map app, there is this uh, emission where the cities have lights on them. So we're going to say that PNG. Okay, and let's see what happens here. Okay, so nothing happened, and that's because I misspelled emission. It only has one M. 
So we'll save for this to go again. Okay, there you go. Okay, so check this out. So all the different cities now have this little glowy effect. You see how that works? And it's because the lights are on in the city. So that is how you do an emission map. And uh, that's a pretty cool feature. So there's another thing that we could do. And we're just going to go through all the ones that we put here in the folder. And we're going to say first material dot, uh, sorry, we're going to say normal. So the normal is going to be its 3D, um, its 3D texture. And so we're going to say names. And we, of course, named it normal so it's easy to remember. And we'll wait for it to load. Okay, and there it's loaded. And as you can see, the mountains. So let's look at like uh, right there in South America, but the Himalayas right here. You'll see that they have a 3D shadow to it. And it's actually, it's like extruded a little bit. So that's how you do a map. And if you just look in the documentation at all this stuff, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go to SCN node. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to say search with Google. Say SCN node class reference. And then I'm going to go to the material property. So first I go to geometry property. So I go to SCN geometry. And then I go to uh, the first material. So here's the first material property. And I say SCN material. Okay, so now I'm, I'm at this point. And you can actually read in the documentation how this works, okay? And you c it explains what you need to do with your artist in order to create a map like this, okay? So there's a bunch of different options. There's even one uh, that we won't cover, but you could do like a transparent map and you could have clouds, okay? So it's really, really powerful and uh, there's all sorts of different things. So let's go ahead and just do a couple more just so you get the idea of how this works. And uh, let's go ahead and modify the... Uh, the multiply. Okay, so let's say that you have a level and you have a spaceship or something and you want to show damage on it. Well, what you can do is you could say first material dot uh, multiply and you could say contents and then what you can do is set this color to let's say like a, a purple color. Okay, so now you can see that the entire world is purple and it has this purple hue to it because we've multiplied on a purple color to it. So that's cool, but it looks kind of goofy. So we're just going to comment that out. And then the next thing I want to show you is uh, the geometry. So we're going to say dot first material dot. Did I say geometry? I meant to say transparency. Okay, so we're going to, I'm going to show you how the transparency works. And what I can do here is if I want this to fade out, maybe it's going to get hit with an object or something. So I can say transparency is equal to 0.5. And as you can see, it's a little bit transparent uh, compared to if it was one, which is the default value, it'll be completely visible. Okay. And there's another property, which is really cool. And this is like the shininess of it. So if we go to first material and we say shininess. Okay. So check this out right now. If you look at the water, so the default value is one. And if you look at the water, the, uh, it's pretty shiny, but it's not that shiny. Okay, you can see this light is, is pretty cool. But let's say that this is like 50, and you'll see that the water becomes almost like this really metallic. You see how that, that changed? Now it's like it's almost like the floor in a mall, where it's like super, super reflective and shiny. So you can change the, uh, the texture of the specular map, right? Remember, this is the specular, and that's how shiny it is going to be. And you notice the light doesn't show up at all on the uh, land because the map is set up so it doesn't. All right, so we could change this back to the default value, which I believe is one. If I changed it to zero, then it's gonna be like completely matte. It'll look kind of ugly. Yeah, so you see the water is just completely matte. It's not shiny. And uh, let's change it back to one. Okay, and you can see it uh, looks a little bit better. All right, so that is how you work with materials. And again, the material is just like the plaster on top of the shape that you make. And if you want to, you could use some really cool stuff by adding on images here. And, um, or you could just use colors. Okay, so that is it for this lesson, and I will see you in the next one.